Greetings, all my fellow samurai out there. I'm Dudes Dizden, coming at you with another chapter of you of Samurai 8, the legend of Hachimaru, or the story of Hachimaru, Hachimaru Gaiden. Now, that makes things easier for me. Chapter 2, titled A Guest from Above. Now this chapter is actually so much better than the first one as it actually takes the time to slow things the fuck down. And I am so glad about that because any more exposition and I literally would have just exploded. We open up with Hachimaru just being so thankful at the fact that he can now actually eat solid food and no longer needs to consume apple liquid to survive for the most part. He then ends up talking things out with, um, you know, his master. Um, just to get a little bit of a discussion going, but he then goes to play a, his video game that he's played with before. But Hayataro doesn't really want him to do that. He wants him to take his sword back and, you know, put it back on the wall. Hachimaru does that and laments the fact that all of his swords are basically fake. And, you know, there really isn't much to them. You know, he doesn't see the point of carrying them around anymore. However, when he actually goes out to walk his, um, you know, holder dog, um, um, uh, what was it, um, Dharma comes up and gives him one of his swords, but Hachimaru doesn't really feel the need to bring it since it's a fake sword. However, this goes back to Dharma's, you know, statement in the previous chapter, that even with a dull sword, a true samurai should be able to cut, you know, anything with it. And he tells, you know, he gives these words of wisdom to Hachimaru throughout it. You know, keep your sword on you at all times. If you do not draw your blade from its sheath, how will, how sharp, how will you ever know how sharp it truly is? You know, various stuff along those lines. So Hachimaru takes this to heart and goes off on his very first journey in the outside world. Meanwhile, we notice that sees um. You know, pig men, for the most part, are traveling around in this tank with their leader basically taking like a hot bath in one of them for some reason. I don't know what's up with that, but they're out devastating the countryside for the most part, getting closer to the nearby town. We also come to find out that Heitaro is actually able to fly for some reason which you know completely takes Hachimaru off guard but you know that's just the nature of holders I guess they're able to do these various transformations and all that good stuff so I guess to a certain degree it makes sense that you know Hachimaru would be able to fly and all that junk but Hachimaru's just really taken as he gets to truly see the nearby town and just fly across the side and have just a little bit of fun for the most part. However, this quickly comes to an end as he actually ends up being shot down by some form of tank nearby. And he ends up crashing at a nearby dojo. This dojo is actually the home of a character we will come to be know as Nanashi. Now, Nanashi is very much like Hachimaru was, a bit of a shut-in, a recluse, and actually, you know, I guess in this world, you know, it's very easy to switch your gender or something, as Nanashi hasn't actually been able to come up you know, decide on which gender they actually want to be of all things, which is actually very fascinating. Honestly, I was kind of hoping Nanashi would be a girl, just to have that, you know, f you know, friendship bond, something like that, and have it grow from the beginning, but, um, we'll just have to see if Nanashi ever makes a true decision on any of that. However, in comes Hachimaru crashing through the roof, and, you know, while Nanashi is very taken off guard, um, 
and is actually kind of really shocked to have someone actually notice them. You know, while Hachimaru is basically saying that he'll try to repair Nanashi's roof. But, you know, they don't feel that they're too, you know, Nanashi doesn't feel like they're too, um, you know, accepting of a person actually talking to them and see, you know, very unable to put those social skills to good use as a Nanashi kind of lacks those actual skills from being a shut-in and actually has I guess a sentient right and left hand one is a little bit more um caring and you know kind and stuff like that but the other is a little bit more aggressive and wants Nanashi to be a little bit more assertive and dominant. So, of stereotypical like male-female trees, as the more dominant one wants the Nanashi to be male and the more um, nurturing one wants Nanashi to be female. So, I, mean, I, I have mixed feelings about that whole setup for the most part. But, you know... Um, Nanashi goes on to explain where exactly Hashimaru has actually crashed into and you know the fact that Nanashi is a ward of the castle and uh, the seventh ward of the castle town you know in a dormitory and a dojo to start training warriors and various samurai and the like which Hachimaru immediately takes to Nanashi because he's just like oh you're trying to be a samurai I'm a samurai and you want I want to go out and you know become this super famous well-known warrior throughout all the galaxies and all that good stuff however you know at first you know at, because of this these over bombastic statements and this you know overflowing of confidence Nanashi doesn't really f starts to disconnect for the most part detach themselves from you know really um, I guess you could say Hachimaru's world as Nanashi feels like an outsider constantly looking in and says that they don't even feel like becoming a samurai as it you know as they've never even taken their sword out of their scabbard you know which you know Hachimaru kind of looks down on them for the most part but you know Lefty starts to kind of tell them that these certain things that you know Nanashi has it re is really has a hard time coming out of their shell and hasn't really decided on a lot of things in terms of their direction in life for the most part. You know, but uh, you know, Hachimaru kind of takes pity on them for the most part. You know, on the fact that, you know, Hachimaru sees a lot of themselves in Nanashi. You know, the fact that Nanashi has spent all their time in the room simply playing games. But because of this, uh, Hachimaru actually says in order to kind of continue that bond with Nanashi for the most part. Because Nanashi's like the first person Hachimaru has truly met outside of um, Duruma and his dad and the bandits for the most part but someone his own age that he really relates to so he wants to play one of those samurai fighting games with Nanashi but Nanashi doesn't feel that you know someone who is already a samurai would truly be able to actually connect with Hachimaru so Hachimaru says that he wants to make a bet yeah, that if he should win the game, that Nanashi will have no choice but to go out with Hachimaru just to see the town, just take a little walk with uh, Nanashi and Hayataro, who has actually gone missing in the blast. Um, so they actually end up playing the samurai fighting game with Nanashi having said that he's actually that they are actually the um, second most skilled player in all the world. So there's no way that Hachimaru beat them. Uh, unfortunately for Nanashi, as it turns out, Hachimaru is the number one ranked player in the world and makes quick work of Nanashi quick, fast, and in a hurry. And, you know, because of Hachimaru's move, Nanashi immediately recognizes, you know, who Hachimaru is, the true number one player. So, you know, because of this, Nanashi, you know, has no choice but to accept the terms of the bet. 
But Hach Nanashi actually feels a little down because they always felt that that number one player was someone very uh, similar and akin to Nanashi, only to find it out that it's this super skilled samurai for the most part. But, you know, Hachimaru puts this to rest by saying, look, dude, um, I, until about yesterday, I was a shut-in too. And kind of, you know, Hachimaru explains their whole situation up to current events that he and Nanashi have a lot more in common than what Nanashi actually believes. So they end up breeding their s each other proper for the most part. And, you know, Nanashi, uh, Hachimaru goes on to say that he's so excited just to go out and be able to see the world because everything to him is this bright brand new adventure. And he kind of thanks, um, you know, Hachimaru to kind of, uh, he thanks Nanashi for kind of opening his eyes to just the joys of being able to just go outside now to have been able to meet somebody so interesting and to actually have met what he essentially calls his very first friend and with that Nanashi and Hachimaru go outside into the beautiful sun with Hayataro managing to have tracked down Hachimaru and so the two walk about right in the bright beautiful sun Meanwhile, the pig tank, for the most part, starts to gain traction and starts to move in on the same town that Hachimaru is at. With them, you know, with ha Hachimaru Hayataro and Nanashi being none the wiser, as the commander of the pig tank is ready to slaughter everyone at the dojo. And that's the end of the first chapter. I know, not. Not the greatest, not the worst, just an okay chapter, but honestly, that's kind of how the very first chapter of Naruto was as well. It was just an okay chapter. It was fairly decent for the most part. Nothing just revolutionary within it. Honestly, it was a while before Naruto truly started to gain its feet, to gain traction within the manga world. It took some time. But, you know, we came to love Naruto. You know, it, you know, it was around the time of, I think, the meeting with Zabuza that I completely fell in love with Naruto. So, you know, it harkens to the old days of Shonen where you had that slow build into the series becoming something fantastic. You know, now it's all about that quick, you know, grab people's attention by the balls. But, you know... Um, um, you know, um, Kishimoto is going back to a more simpler time when it was all about that slow burn. Just get things, you know, settled and in order for the most part. Although, the way he started that first chapter was just, it was a lot to take in and overwhelming. But here, this is a little bit more palatable, easy to digest. You know, I'm able to understand Nanashi, I'm able to understand Hachimaru, because they're the two characters that we've gotten set up with. And with that, you know, we also have the introduction of the very first uh, true, true antagonist that Hachimaru will be facing, you know, since that, you know, after that bandit leader. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with Nanashi in the future, as, you know, I guess they're setting it not out. Uh, Nanashi up as the Sasuke character of this season series for the first first for the most part Although I do kind of hope they make that the rival character a female but Just because that would be an interesting turn of events for the most part You know if they're going to give the character an option to be able to choose their own gender Why not just go in that direction? You know that, that feels like it'd be a little bit more interesting and having read ahead a little bit Certain details would, you know, I'd be okay with them being female, but at the same time, they could be a male. And considering how Nanashi starts to relate to Hachimaru towards later chapters, 
it would be interesting either way, but could create some controversy. I already feel like the fact that Nanashi can choose to be male or female, should they so deem, is already stirring a little bit of a pot going on. But, you know, an okay chapter, not the best. Tell me your thoughts, though, in the comment section below. How do you feel about the second chapter in regards to the first? Do you find it a little bit better, or do you, are you still trying to find your footing with this series, and why you should even care about about, you know the Hachimaru s series for the most part you know wh where will when will Samurai 8 start to really blossom into one of the all-time greatest shonen of all time or will it just be the second tier fodder for people just to be like hey, it was all right but you know tell me your thoughts and if you like this review leave me a like if you didn't feel free to leave me a dislike and Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon, that way you never miss out on another chapter of Samurai 8. And until the next video, feel free to subscribe yeah, um, to the next video. You know, and if you want to find me on social media, that's what I'm trying to say. Just Google Do's Diz Din. I am everywhere for better or for worse. And until next time, just remember that you can always find friends in the most interesting of places. Sometimes you might just end up falling right into a new friendship. Until next time, bye bye